Hi, I'm Andrew Connell from Voitanos, and in this quick little screencast, I want to show you how you can submit some changes to the SharePoint framework documentation by submitting a pull request to the official GitHub repository. So let's pick an example out here. What I've done is I filtered for some issues that are assigned to me, and I'm going to find one where someone has left a comment and saying that there is a little bit of uh, some an error uh, on the page and how things should change. Uh, what they suggested the changes. So I've assigned this to myself. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go find the piece of content that they're talking about. So it's this page that we see right here, avoid getting throttled. And they're talking about this paragraph about sporadic traffic. So if I just do a quick little search for that, they are saying that this sentence right here is a little confusing. So here's what we have to do. What I need to do is, and when you create a, uh, a change, you're submitting a change to a GitHub repository, the general process is that you want to create a copy of that repository in your GitHub account. You then make the changes in your copy. We call the, your copy a fork. Um, once you've made the changes in your copy, you then submit your changes as a pull request to the originating repository, the Microsoft repository. And effectively, what that's doing is you're, you're submitting what's called a pull request. That is telling the, the owner of that repository you're saying, I'm requesting you to pull changes from my copy of your repository. So let me show you how to do this. So what I've done, we're inside of this repository. So it's called the SP Dev Docs. That's where all the content lives inside the SharePoint documentation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on fork over here. Now, what that does is that's going to say, where do you want to create this fork? And I already have an instance of it. So I'm going to use my existing instance. Um, so here is my existing copy. And what I want to do is I need to get a copy of this down on my machine where I can make my edits. So I'm going to come over here and click clone or download. And this is the standard process for creating a GitHub repository. You go ahead and clone it. If you're not sure how to do that, there's all this documentation on GitHub that shows you how to do it. Now, I've already gone ahead and done that. So if I'm going to come over here to my command prompt, I've already created a copy of my of the repository right here. So if I open it up, I'm showing you this on Mac OS, but I'm going to do all the GitHub commands or all the Git commands. I'm going to do them all in the command line. So it you know that you can copy those exact same commands on your machine. But just know that you can also uh, use any of the different uh, GUI tools for working with Git and GitHub. Um, I'm just not going to do that in this case to be more universal for what I show you. Now, one of the things I've noticed on my machine or I, that I have an issue on my machine is that I have an issue. And I notice here where it says that my current uh, branch, my master branch is 11 commits behind the SharePoint master branch, which is that when it says SharePoint here, you can see that I forked from SharePoint. And so it's saying that their master branch, I'm way behind it. So what I need to do is I need to update my copy to be at the same level as what the SharePoint copy is. And if I don't do that, then there's a chance that my edits aren't going to be accepted because they may contradict what somebody else has done. Now, if you had just forked your repository, you're not going to have this issue. You're going to be even. So what I'm about to show you is only if you've done one of these in the past. So here I'm going to jump back over to my machine, over to my command prompt. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, get remote V. And what I'm doing is I'm asking, I'm saying, show me a list of all the remote references in my current repository that are pointing to other repositories. So in this case here, the origin, the name, the remote called origin is pointing to my copy of it. That's the one when I did a clone, it automatically created origin. I created another one here called upstream and I pointed to the, I pointed to the Microsoft copy of the SP dev docs issue list. So if you don't have that, which you probably don't by default, here's how you create that. Go back to the uh, SharePoint document, the SharePoint repository and go get a reference to his um, his URL for this for this item. So you're going to grab either I'm using SSH on my machine for authentication. If you're using HTTPS, you grab that one. I'm just going to grab the SSH one and I'm going to come over to my machine and let's say I'm going to do a get remote add. This is new. I'm going to give it a name called this is new and then just paste that in. So what does that do? What that did is that just created another remote right here for my machine. Now, why am I doing that? I'm going to show you why I'm doing that in just a second. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear the screen to kind of clean things up a bit. So I'm going to say get fetch and remember ours is called upstream. 
So what it's doing is I'm saying, go make sure you have a copy or, or in memory, you understand everything that's living on your remote on the remote repository that you don't already know about. So here it's grabbing all the commits that we have for master. What I'm then going to say is I want to say, make sure that my master has everything that the remote's master has. So I'm going to say, get pull in and we're going to do a command called rebase. That basically says, take everything that's on mine and put it on top of what's already there. Well, I don't have anything that's new, so it's not going to do anything, but just really sync mine up with what's already in the Microsoft repository. So I'm going to say pull from the remotes up the remote called upstream, get his master branch. So effectively what I'm doing is go grab all the Microsoft stuff that, that they have that I don't already have and add that to my local copy. Here I can see that this little arrow pointing up on my machine is telling me that you've got more stuff than what is in your origin. So I'm just going to say get push. And what you'll see here, if I now go back over to the browser and I look at my copy of this, see where it says 11 commits. When I refresh the page, it's now going to show me that I'm even. So now this is in great shape. Now I've prepped my machine for doing a good pull request. So now let's go back over to the machine. And I'm going to go ahead and launch VS Code where I can make the changes to that article. So here in VS Code, I have found the file uh, in question that we wanted to make an edit to. And here again, here's that sentence that we're talking about where it's a little confusing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little change to it right about here. But before I make those changes, let me show you a good practice that you should do. You should always create a branch inside of your repository that is going to include the changes related to the issue or to the update that you're applying. And the reason for that is because you want all of your changes that you're supplying for the specific documentation change or when you're fixing an issue, all of those should be completely isolated from anything else that is in that repository. So, and first let's go find out what, the, what that issue number was. Uh, we see it was issue 4106 right here. So the, the process I like to do is I like to say, get branch, create a brand new branch. So I'll say get, you can say branch, or I'm gonna say get checkout. Dash B says create a branch and call it doc fix issue 4106. So you can see here, I now have a new issue, a new branch here called doc fix issue 4106. Now I'm gonna come over here and let's make our change to the code. So what, what it's trying to say here is it's basically saying that uh, these apps are gonna include synchronization engines, backup providers, search indexers, classification engines, and data loss prevention tools, and any other kind of a tool that would attempt to look at all the data uh, in its entirety and make some changes. So let's rephrase this a bit. How about we say in any other tool which attempts to reason over the entirety of the data and apply changes to it. Now, because what that's doing, this is all about uh, throttling and it just means I'm going over and over and over a lot of different processes. So I'm gonna go ahead and save my changes here and in VS Code, I'm gonna make a change to it. So I'm gonna say uh, a rephrased statement to be more clear. Now, another thing I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna add in a comment uh, inside of my commit that I'm gonna be submitting. And what this is gonna do is this is going to fix a specific issue, 4106. And if I do it like that, if I put it in as fixes space and then a number sign in the issue number, when this pull request that I'm gonna submit, when, that, when this gets applied, what's cool about this is that it's going to um, automatically close my issue. So I'm gonna go ahead and click check to create the commit. And then I'm going to push my changes up to my fork. So here it says, hey, the branch that you're on right now, there's nothing uh, inside of your uh, origin repository. Do you want me to create one? And I'll just say, yes, go ahead and do it. It says, where do you wanna create it? And I want it to go in my origin. I don't wanna create it inside the SharePoint repositories. I wanna create it in my repository, my fork. So I'll let this thing finish. And now let's finish, let's come back to the browser and let's look at my copy here. So I'm over here in my copy. And here we can see, look, we just submitted doc fix issue 4106. So I'm gonna come over here and say, compare and create a pull request. So here it's doing, creating a pull request. It's going, I'm, I'm making a request to this repository to pull from this repository, using from this branch into that branch right here. So here, I'm gonna come down this, you can see the comment was already added. I'm rephrasing a statement to be more clear. 
So here, we're gonna come over here. I'm gonna say this is a content fix. So I'm just gonna put a little cross right there and I'll get rid of this. Uh, let's see, let's go down a little bit farther. We can delete this entire section because we don't need it as the instructions say. Uh, and then it says, what are the related fixes? Well, let's grab the comment up here, this fixes, and we will put that right here. There we go, so we have fixes like right here. I'll go through and close this out. And then I'm gonna give a little description on what is inside this pull request. Rephrased a sentence, a statement to be more clear that was phrased a little confusingly. There we go, we're all good. So I'm gonna go ahead and then say, create a pull request. Now I've submitted my first pull request here to the SharePoint Dev Docs issue list. Notice here, if I go back over to the issue that we were just on by clicking on it, and if I scroll down, what you will see is that it will reference, it has a reference here because my issue that I had created had a comment in there that said that it was for the uh, uh, 4106, issue 4106. So it automatically added this statement to it. And my pull request was automatically added as well because it had a, um, uh, it had a comment in there as well that says it fixed number 4106 and there's the pull request. And that's it. That's all you have to do to go ahead and to submit documentation uh, fixes or updates to the SharePoint documentation. Um, from this point here, we just wait for somebody from Microsoft to approve our change and merge it into the docs.